So you want to learn MIPS programming, right? From scratch. How to automate your things in stationers, not using many logic chips with all the wires, but just, just express your will in text and the machine will obey and do your bidding. That is what you want. Well, to uh, invent some, to build some programming devices, one must first build the universe, so let's do that then. Let's start an entirely new world and do all the steps. Don't worry, I will pause the video, so I will have to do all the work and all you have to do is watch the key points. The downside will be that you will have to experience choppy music while it keeps playing for me, so there's that then. Not sure where exactly I'm going with this, but um, yeah, go with the flow. Yeah, still cleaning up, getting the basics done. And it's very, very chaotic in here. Out of them. First bit of iron smelting. Lots to do still. Yeah, I needed a few more iron sheets and so I made them. <laughs> Yeah, things are taking form quickly. Mind you, this is all real time, not for you, but I'm just, you know, starting, playing, pausing the recording. This is not a video cut that I did later, it's all, um, well, let's just say I hope this will work out. Hmm, I guess I'm ready to take my first sip. I mean, I need to drink something, right? But the airlock isn't ready yet. Hmm, let's configure that quickly. Uh, which one is the exterior? Hmm, I don't know. That's the exterior. Okay. Finally some sound in here. Might actually be enough for me to breathe. Yeah, okay. All legitimate, no drinking in the vacuum. Easy mode is really easy when you know what you're doing. But anyway, this video is not for total beginners. This video is for those who know their way around in stationers, but have no clue about the MIPS programming. I mean, like none, nada, zip. If you know some of uh, some about it and want to learn more, then you can watch my video, a thorough introduction to MIPS programming, also on the moon. Um, Oh, sun's going down. See you in a few seconds. Welcome back then. I still have my lights off because I don't have good electricity yet. Because I don't have a station battery. For that we need steel. But now I have everything in place. There's my furnace. Haven't used it yet. We spit it out into the base. And my arc furnace also spits stuff out into the base. So let's, let's do the things that we need to do. For the uh, MIPS programming we will need an IC10. We will always need one. And that takes... Gold... Doesn't matter so much, but steel, electrum, solder. Steel we will definitely have. Electrum and solder. Necessary. And we will also need a housing, though you can also just use a filtration unit which has a built-in housing. 
or you know an AC they all have uh, these slots in there so you can place chips in there and run that stuff and then you might think wait the, that only has two screw uh, two screws the housing has six screws uh, so I rather want to use a housing yeah well if you want to do proper MIPS programming you will not use the screws at all but um, I mean that's a matter of taste I guess there are benefits to using the screws but in my opinion they are mostly downsides anyway let's go and smell some stuff I will keep this real time now so um, you're bored you have to fast forward yourself now The furnace, complete virgin, doesn't even have some kind of uh, shoot yet. I mean, for venting. What's its name? I don't know. Stack? Yeah, stack. Solder. If you press F1, you have the station PDA, and then you can see what you need to do to get solder. I mean, that's all the basic stuff you, you, you have to know that yourself already at this point. Very low temperature needed. Pressure doesn't matter. So let's get into it then. Solder. Now it's burning. Already very hot, okay. Too hot basically to make solder. But it's already cooling down. Probably because the pressure is so low. There's so little gas in there, so the, basically the body of this heat is a very small body. You know, the amount of objective thermal energy is low. I could toss in some more oxide to cool it down because ice is cold. Or I could just wait. How long do we have to wait? 550. Let's accelerate this a bit. Huh. Doesn't accelerate very much. All of that from scratch, just for this stupid video. <laughs> Too slow. Yes, yes. Six five. Almost. This is not the way you have to do this. But what am I saying? I'm not talking to beginners. 
I'm only talking to beginner MIPSers. Basically to non-MIPS stationers. Yes, they exist. Ah, it's green. Okay, we can flip the lever and... There's our solder. What's next? Electrum. Pressure 2.4 max. Temperature is basically irrelevant. Needs to be slightly higher than we have. What pressure do we have? Too high, so let's open this. Yeah, I shouldn't do that. This will unleash a unburnt fuel, so it will go out there just like as fire. That's a waste. I guess I'm going to do the steel first. So levers are closed. Yep. Or lever. I really don't know how to pronounce this. Three hundred iron and then one hundred carbon hydrocarbon. Power low. That should then be already the correct steel mix. It's not. We need nine hundred K for this. And there's our steel. Way too early to do this, to put this in, but it won't hurt. We want to make Electrum. And so in you go. What's coming out there? Ah! <laughs> nice. So way too high pressure. We need to wait until it's 2.4 and I guess then I will heat it up again. Can we do something already with this? Ah, uh, there's a little problem here. Isn't there? Good. I thought the gas from the furnace was getting indoors, but I think we're kind of safe. Reminds me, I have never emptied my waste tank so far. Or refilled my oxygen. Easy mode is really easy. Particularly on the moon, where there is no heat or cold that would make this go into that so much quicker. I think it's time for a few bigger batteries, huh? And for a station battery. Let's see. Station battery. Uh huh, I have that. Can we see how it is from here? Yeah! 
We have to wait until it's at 2.4 megapascals and then we have to heat it up again to 600k. Currently it's about above 900 or about 900. Haven't fired this one up yet because uh, I have no stable atmosphere and that's also not the goal. First step shall be MIPS programming. And we have enough food reserves. Would be nice if these turned on and off automatically when we leave the station, right? Of course, we can do that with MIPS. And it's even very easy. But if you don't know yet how to do that, it's just... How does how does, how does it work? See, I'm trying to open those doors so that henceforth you can say, I do that in MIPS. You're using logic chips? You are a peasant. Know that you are a peasant and I'm looking down on you while spitting on you simultaneously. I mean, like, as in the same time. And this, what good is this? I mean, now it's burning, right? There's some stuff in there, there's something in the chute. Why didn't it go in there? There's some stack of stuff because you have to push this button. Well, you could put up some logic chips which do that for you. Or you could write two lines, two lines of MIPS code. Two lines only. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So what can we do with the solder alone? We need Electrum for this. What's, what's with the housing? Copper, steel, solder. Okay, we can make the housing already. Nice. But first a large battery. Two actually which needs more gold. Mm -hmm. I have to keep an eye on this one. 12.6 Guess our electricity isn't strong enough But get, we got lots of coal and yeah, maybe I should put up a um, a solar panel or two. Eleven, ten. Housing. So this is the, one of the steps that you really need to know if you don't want to plug that chip into your filtration or AC or something. Look for the housing uh, and make one. Uh, where's the solder? Yeah, I was trying to be a Metallica singer. Battery, where will you go? Hmm. I didn't plan this well. Doesn't quite fit between these two. I guess I have to move the table, even though it's so nicely placed. Will I just put them out there? And remove the stupid solar panel from that place? Hmm. I will. Oh, electricity burned out? That sucks. Why is it still at 0%? Is there nothing coming in from the solar panel? Zero watts? Okay. What? Haha, <laughs> funny. Do we have sheets of the metal kind? No wonder the battery was empty. I'm charging the big ones over here. That's sucking of course dry this big one over here. Makes sense. Um, I see housing. 
Where, where's the housing did you see? No, it's an integrated circuit housing device that I'm currently creating. Oh, that's what you mean. Now this is the place where you want to show us stuff quickly with all the cuts and stuff. Yeah, but I just decided differently. So that's what it is now. <laughs> so that will be the electricity source goes into there. I realize I need bigger cables for that. Mm -hmm. Which I don't have yet. Need to make them. There's our housing. And that's what it looks like. Here we place the chip. You can spray paint the housing, you can spray paint the chip separately. You will have to take it out for that. That can be very useful, you know. I used, I did some programming of an airlock at some point and um, then the airlock was in an intermediary state because I was still developing it and so I had to reset it. So I had to click and click and do some stuff and some, had to change something in the code every once in a while. That's stupid. I just made a second chip which did all the resetting. I plugged it in for a moment and then I plugged in the, the primary one and continued development. A nice way to approach this. And for that color coding is of course a good idea. These six screws, um, well here we have the logic connection and here we have the electricity connection. Uh, once any, anything that's connected here via the logic connection uh, can be accessed by these uh, screws. But I prefer not to use them because um, when you... Um, well, if I would... This airlock has this uh, active vent assigned. If I, uh, if I deconstruct this now and put it up again um, then I cannot reassign it. The airlock chip uh, board will be broken. That is how this works currently. Oh god damn it. I forgot some. Wasn't that clear, huh? So what do we need for Electrum again? More. Okay. Never mind. You don't see me complaining. Okay. That's enough for now. Little overzealous, huh? So let's make the IC10 then. Oh, we need gold. And I blew all that in, in my cables. You blew your cable? No, I know. I, uh, <sighs> That's not what happened. You misunderstood me successfully. I need more gold. Ah, shit, man. You know what? Okay. Now we have what we need. Uh, oh, we need one more gold. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, now we can program. 
Hey, wait, where's the keyboard? Oh, we need a computer, like in real life. Okay, let's make a computer. They come in two flavors. One, oh my god, we need gold again. <laughs> uh, but I got enough. Mm. Uh, they come in two flavors. One is one that I can make with a simple electro printer. For the other, I need the modded one, you know, the Tire 2 one. The Tire 2 one can make me a laptop which I can carry to any place and I plop it down and I can take the chip and stick it in and then I can use the computer and program then I take the chip out again and put it in here and then the program can run and practice. However, the simple computer which you cannot take everywhere has an upside in comparison to the laptop. You can install, I mean you have to install it somewhere and the only way for it to access the chip is to be on the same logic network. And then you can just select on the computer whatever chip you want to work on, for example, this one or the one in some kind of filtration unit. And then you edit the code and that's it. The export and then the chip will have the code and can run it immediately. So that's a bit more convenient. Let's do that then. Here's our computer. Where will we work? This chip also needs to be wired up, I mean this board. Turning this on means the chip will run, but you don't need to uh, turn it on to edit the code. So let's edit the code. Oh, what's happening? Not working? I have a computer, why is it not working? Do I need to install Windows first? Kind of. It doesn't have a board yet. These uh, astronaut computers don't come with uh, an, you know, an Omni system onto which you can install anything, but they use hardened uh, boards for certain purposes. And so we have to make the right board for this one. Let's see. Board. What do we have? Communications motherboard to call down a trader. Nope. IC editor motherboard. Yep, that's the one. Logic motherboard. This can be used to uh, compare things, end and or, and then make decisions and then switch lights and shit, I think. This I never used so far. Shamefully, I have not yet played with rockets yet. Hmm. That's still upon me. And the sorter motherboard to control the sorters at, uh, for example, your silos when you have deep miners running and want all your copper to go into one silo and so forth. So let's make this thing. Oh, gold copper. Mm. Hmm, seems like I need to smelt some more. Oh, I have some gold in there still. How much gold do we need? One. <laughs> I think I have one gold. How annoying is it that I have to push this thing every time to start it up again? Shouldn't we, like, solve that? With some kind of computing power thing? What you think, huh? Yes, of course. Okay, in you go. Ah. This is the computer. On the left we choose what chip we want to deal with. On the right we have the import and export button and you must absolutely understand which button does what. Because if you click the wrong button in the wrong moment you will find yourself reloading your save game or when that uh, happens too late uh, biting your genitalia even though that is mechanically a hard thing to do but you will pull it off because <laughs> getting the wrong button here is really... it sucks. 
So let's choose that one thing. Oh, it's already chosen because we already have one. Okay. Then let's import the code that is on that chip. Oh, that's nothing because the chip is empty. It's brand new. And export does the opposite. What's in here writes in there. So let's go type in code then. This is our code editor. We have 120 lines of code. And uh, if we press enter here, the last line will be gone. The last lines will just fall out of reality. So we have to take care of that. So what do we want to do? Well, let's start with something simple, which I will explain shortly. Now I have written some code. Now I want to confirm that. Otherwise the code will not be changed. Here we can see what I wrote. Now I export that. Behold, zero bytes in the tooltip. 36 bytes. So now you see me pointing at the housing and you see state zero. Now you see state 10. So what I just did is I wrote a value to this housing and that has no effect other than me seeing it. That is very useful for debugging. But uh, obviously you would want to um, have, oh my God, more gold. You would want to have an LED display rather to show some meaningful value. Maybe we want to do that next, huh? Show some value on, LED, on an LED instead. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Right, scroll wheel now. I have to choose. And... Um, small LED display. I will now show you how a beginner would use the MIPS chip with housing, which is we would use the screws. So let's do that. I have to think a bit when I do that because uh, when I program this because I never do that. So I've completely forgotten. So uh, if I use a screwdriver on this, then we see the current device is no device. And the next thing that I would select is the area power controller. Why is it showing that at all? Because when you have many things that you can potentially select, it's a fucking chore to do. But now you can just look on the right and then break yourself in time, which will be just too late. In other words, then the thing on the right will have become the thing on the left. And that's the idea. So let's look for the LED thingy. There it is. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Worked right away. Nice. Oh yeah, let's turn that on. Now we have a zero on that thing. So let's see. Um, I'm not sure how this works. SD0 setting 90. This might be correct. I'm not sure. It's Oh, it's showing a 90. Interesting. So whenever I write code, this will immediately execute the code anew. Because I didn't know that until now. I have 800 plus hours of pure stationering behind me. I mean, not Steam counter. My Steam counter is at, wait a second. Uh, 1050 hours but um, you know Station Years is a game that made me actually after decades uh, skip some nights and just keep the fuck going and this led to some short naps at my desk so um, yeah anyway uh, so what I just did here nice that we can see this like hit this S apparently means like safe or store, you know, and I stored in DB or stored in D0 a value. Which value did I store? We know that 10 or respectively 19 I stored. And uh, what is setting? Let's see what that is. S. Now we see some help here. Let's see. Uh, we can actually go with the mouse here and get some... Uh, some uh, tooltip which explains what this does stores register value to logic type on device by housing index value now this w will sound completely what the fuck i know some of these words but not the sentence if you even know some of these words ex uh, other than on by to and value uh, but uh, once you know your way around you won't even read the tooltips um, these buttons up here this one makes this thing transparent this one pauses reality, which you probably want to do sometimes when programming. This one shows you... Uh, let's see what that is. Uh, 
well, slot variables. Um, let's not go into slots now. That's, uh, mm, yeah, short info about that. Uh, this thing, the arc furnace, has an input slot where you can put something in, and it has an output slot where stuff would come out. And you can also check and program uh, depending on, on those slots. That's what the slots things are good for. You can check how many things are in the slot, um, and how damaged is the stack that's in the slot, or the thing that's in the slot. Um, growth might be referring to plants, when you're referring to a plant slot or something. So, what's this? That's a help regarding variables, and there are lots of them, and therefore it's very unfortunate that when you type something up here... Oh! I thought it would also type in the source code. It does type in the source code, but only when I press enter. Okay, then that's acceptable, I guess. Oh no, I want to delete this here, and then it deleted in the source code? Come on, I need to fix these bugs before expanding the game. The fundamental bugs need to be solved before moving on, please. Um, but these are rarely used, I mean, using this menu, because usually you know what you want to do. Um, let's take an example. Ah, we just had ratio liquid nitrogen. Ratio volatiles, ratio volatiles, ratio water, stuff like that. So let's look at an example. Cancel. Look at the pipe analyzer. Uh, here, we have, here we go. When we scroll down, we see the logic values and now you will recognize oh the ratio nitrous oxide oh that's that stuff yeah that's that's the values we're talking about and this is just a list of all potential values that can ever occur you know so not necessarily the ones you can use in a respective situation and finally we come to the thing that I want to talk about in the first place when I was talking about s the commands themselves oh that's a lot of commands I don't know one third of these, you know? I don't know one third of these. Actually, or maybe I know maybe I know most of these without realizing because here, we, for example, we have a, the branch command relative and then GT as in greater than. See, uh, sometimes something's logically com composed out of characters and text blocks. Wait, let me, ch let me change the music, it's a bit too distracting. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine for programming. <clears throat> a branch relative if greater than or equal, and I don't know what Z actually is. Oh yeah, here, here we go. Relative branch to line B if A is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. Yeah, but, I mean, okay, let, but let's ignore that. Let's return to topic. So, uh, we are writing to D0 setting 19. What is setting? Right. To, now it wants to know the device that I want to write to mm. and then we have DB which is always the device in which the chip is placed so in this case it's the chip housing but if it's a filtration unit then it is that filtration unit um, and then it wants to, to know the logic type what is logic type that's these things you know and which logic type currently makes sense well <laughs> What device are we dealing with? Let's see. Uh, the housing. What logic types, that, what logic values does it have? You can read whether it has power, you can read whether it is turned on or off, which you can only do while it's on, because when it's off, you, the code isn't being executed. You can read the current line number where the code is executing, which is funny. Um, you can read if there's an error. I don't know, actually, I've never done that. Required power, reference ID. We will talk about reference IDs later. Where they are quite important. And it, it sounds like it's oh, complicated. No, it's not. It's really not. I mean, what's your name? Uh, George, Peter, Christoph, Christian? Yeah, that's your reference ID. Okay, that was hard. Now, setting. Um, that's that's the value that can that's the debugging value it, it doesn't do anything i think you can possibly read this value out from from remotely you know from a different device but i'm not sure so we can basically hand over data but there are more intelligent ways to do that i think with a memory chip or even by directly reading another device's stack i don't know so prefab hash is um uh, so your name is christian and you are a human 
Okay, with that out of the way, let's uh, look at the LED. We can pause here too, that's very nice. The three of them are basically identical when it comes to logic. Let's look at the small one anyway. And I still find that irritating, thank you very much. Oh, that's, that's okay. <clears throat> now, logic. Here we can write the setting. That's the text that's on the device. You're seeing a pattern here, right? Uh, the value setting seems to be some kind of generic but very prominent value that some devices might be using. And when you write, for example, to the setting of an AC device, you know, the air conditioner, then that sets the temperature that you want to achieve. Um, if we can turn this thing on and off. Peculiarly, we can't lock it because most devices have a lock uh, value, so we, the human cannot interact with it. That is interesting for the analyzer. Here, the pipe analyzer can be locked, so I cannot accidentally turn it off because while it's turned off, reading a value from it will just result in NAN, not a number, or in zero or something. And then, I don't know, my base might explode. It depends on what I'm doing with those with that information. So it's, it's good that I can actually lock it, and afterwards I would turn it on in the source code. So, and then I cannot turn it off as uh, manually, you know. LED. And we can write the color. Let's do that. That's that's fun to do. Let's write the color. Uh, it's currently 19. Uh, <laughs> the color is 19. Yeah, sure. Um, SDB. Oh, yeah. This line is obviously incomplete. What happens if you want to run that? You hear? That also works when this thing is underground, when there's some... Hydration critical when the hydration is critical. I mean, when there's some, some floor cladding, when you have covered the walls, the floors a little. Uh, I hope you really like the music we play here at Sum FM. And I hope that you'll support us as well. We can use your financial support. It's the only way we pay our bills and stay on the air here. So uh, go to SumFM.com and click on the support button. You'll find out how you can get t-shirts, CDs, and more. Thanks for listening. <clears throat> so error incorrect argument count at line seven um, when you when you know a bit about programming you know that subroutines take arguments usually not always what is an argument that is information you give someone or you give that thing for example you tell someone um, bring the thing and they they now have like a placeholder in their head due to I mean they now okay yeah, the person is just the person now you turn the person into a subroutine for a moment by telling them bring that thing over here so you now have a subroutine that brings a thing you could also have said something else and it would be a different type of subroutine so you're telling the guy bring a thing and this guy uh, the guy now has a parameter the parameter describes the thing and now you tell the guy when you call the subroutine when you call him when you say bring the thing what um, what the par parameter shall be and that information that you give him for that parameter is called the argument so the incorrect argument count at line 7 means that I haven't told the guy yet what thing to bring so what logic types do we have well it depends on what we're writing let's say we want to write to the LED color dot red and um, wait no, <laughs> we want to write to the color value, and what do we want to write? We could, for example, write the, uh, the number zero, but obviously... Oh, no, it's blue. It's no longer green. But obviously, see, I didn't know that. Obviously, it makes more sense to go for color dot blue. But since we already have that, let's say red instead. And that rhymes. And now it's red instead. Let's make that change between red and blue, shall we? Huh. It seems to be not working. What's going on? Well, you have to consider the timing. I mean, what timing do you expect? This thing is supposed to turn red and then it's supposed to turn blue. You have to define... I mean, the computer can do wondrous things, but it is also... 
It is like it's always working in the omni context, like any sane human being would also do. As in, you don't, you can't assume what the fuck it, uh, this, uh, it, the, what is going on. What is, what, what are they talking about? Uh, so the computer is missing information. Uh, if you want the computer to do, to do this at a certain speed, you have to tell it that. Currently, it's just executing this as fast as it can. So let's sleep for like uh, one second in between these two. I have never used the sleep command. Let's see if this works. Uh, maybe. I Ah. Oh, it did work, right? Red. Blue. But we want it to blink red and blue. So now we can keep copying this, but you see where this is going. We need a loop. We need the, we need the computer to do that again and again. And to do that, we can uh, use a jump command, which unconditionally goes to a line. Um, yeah, and let's not forget that we need to sleep here too, uh, because if I jump to this line, to line 6 now, um, it would otherwise turn red, wait, turn blue, and then instantly turn red, because the jump command would, would be executed right after blue. But now we have a sleep, and so now we should get a blinking red and blue thing. Yeah! But if we edit the source code now, uh, stupid things can happen. For example, if I think, oh, there's some wasted lines here, let's remove that. <laughs> what happens now? Export. It no longer works. Why does it no longer work? Because I'm saying jump to line 6 and line 6 is now a different one. But it makes more sense to have some, some kind of marker here. And what most stationers do is they just write the name start. Could also be something else. It doesn't matter really. And then uh, we just jump to start, because that works just as well. And now, it doesn't matter where that's written, it will always work. What would happen if we remove the sleep commands? And you know what? You don't have to remove them, you can do this. Write this, this character in front of a line, and then this line will be disabled. Huh. I didn't expect this to run this smoothly, actually. See, um, you have to consider this is not an integrated develop development environment running some so software on your computer then at maximum speed. And even there, it will not run at maximum speed. The operating system will have a word to say on that. You know, you, there will be other tasks that will be running in between. Either this will be on a different chip, you know, that the, the, the CPU has multiple chips built in, basically multiple threads. It can run multiple programs simultaneously. But there's also time slicing. You know, your program will be halted for a very short moment that you can't even realize something else will be executed and then your program again and in this game it is even more intensely so um, if you have a loop like this uh, then the game will say okay I have now executed like 128 lines of code at super high speed and uh, I don't want to do that all the time so let's force a little break there and then um, and then it continues and therefore what we do is we uh, we yield, you know. We say, okay, I I I am I am uh, not so I don't I insist so much so hard that this work uh, runs at super high speed. So uh, I yield, you know. I run some code, but then I yield. You can do some stuff also, game, and the game will be happy. But it will also say to you, dude, if you hadn't done that, I would do it myself at some arbitrary location. So uh, good on you for doing that in a defined location, so that you know what your code is doing at what time. And that is why we have the yield command. Now let's see, what if we use the yield command here for, for sleeping? Export. Then we will see just the same. That is a coincidence, or I don't know why exactly the speed was nicely blinking when I didn't have any waiting in there. I don't know. But I know one thing, the entire game runs on a game step. That game step is almost precisely half a second. So every half second something will change. Let's look at the thing lying on the floor and behold how beautiful it is. Then look at the thing and um, ah, let's let's go in here. I will close my helmet. 
You see, it is jumping in half, half second steps. And that's the entire simulation. I bet you didn't realize, because everything is so smoothed out, you know? With these animations which are interpolating between two states, and the game is pretending as if it's running smoothly. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, this is the best game ever made, period. If you disagree, fuck off. Um, so, um, now that we have done this, let's do something meaningful. For example, maybe we want to count up. We have 19 here, right? Why do we have 19? Let's count up. So let's... Uh, how do we do that then? Okay, we have now learned whenever the code starts, whenever we export, whenever we plug in the chip, is we'll execute this stuff up here and then it will go here and then it will... Well, then we ex execute that endlessly. Um, so if you want to uh, count upwards, then we need to use a variable. We could, of course, use the variable of the device itself. Let's do that then. Let's um, remove that red and blue yielding stuff, because that's over with. And instead, write to the device to the that we have at screw zero. And yes, I will show you later how to not use the screws, because you can be screwed if you use those. So, write to D0 setting color blue. Oh, what does that do? Well, it will probably write a zero. Yeah, because we have seen already, if you put a zero in, that will become blue. This means that color dot zero stands, uh, color dot blue stands for the value zero. But that's not relevant. I'm just trying to point out how the, in the background everything is abstract. Uh, so, write to the setting which value? Hmm. And now we need a variable, because you cannot... I mean, you could, for example, um, load from the device zero the setting, right? But where does this value go? You know, the load command loads something, the, the uh, load and save, load and save, uh, save, saves something. But where does it load that? That's the thing. We have seen that here, when you press L, then you see R. What is R? Well, you have registers. What is a register? A register is a variable, and you have 16 of those. Only 16 variables. But there are ways to extend this. I will not talk about this now. It's too complicated. You know, the stack and such. Um, and we have uh, 16 of these. We're starting at zero, because programming usually indexes stuff at zero. That has some advantages. Also, the computer has zero and one, zero and one, not one and two. Okay. So let's load into this register R0 from the device 0 the setting. And then we write to the device uh, D0, which is our LED, again into the setting R0. Now obviously this will not do anything because we'll just load and save the same value. We can change it, we can win alter it, we can alter, we can add to R01. Nice, huh? We can just add something. Just write add and this will add something. But it's not that simple. Because, um, I mean, it's actually good that it is this way. Because you have to first t tell the computer what the target shall be of this operation. Like here, when you say save, then it wants to know where in this device. When you say add, it wants to know where in, for example, register R5. And in register R5, we want to put the sum of R0 and 1. So let's do that then. Let's write into register R5 this and confirm and export. Looky looky. Now it's counting up. That wasn't so hard, was it? Let's go again, again through the source code. This writes to the housing DB. I don't know actually where we can look up this DB stuff. That's something maybe you should just memorize because it's really useful. Very fundamental. And S and L also very fundamental. Um, yeah, uh, something I did here, I wrote into a different register, but I can also write into the same register. There's no problem with that, absolutely none. I load into register R0. Then I tell it to add 1 to register R0, and the result of this will afterwards, once this addition has taken place, be written into register R0, and then I write that to the, to the thing. But instead of reading 
um, wait, instead of reading the value from setting, I can also just say up here, I say uh, write into register R0 the value 10. And then down here, I say add into register R0 the sum of R0 and 1 and write that into setting. So now we will start at 10 and count up, actually at 11, because the first addition is uh, taking place before we do the first writing. See, there's also something that a programmer might stumble over. So we just saw that I uh, introduced a new command, move. Uh, it's, move is kind of a stupid command. I th thought that already back then when I started assembler programming on the, on the Amiga in the 1980s. Um, because it's not really move, it's copy. This means copy this value into this register. That's all it does. Now the register R0 has the value 10. Um, the R0 we are currently using as a counter. Maybe we want to actually know that it is a counter. And there's a way to do that. And what I just did is I made it synonymous if I use R0 or counter. Here I'm using R0. Um, oh, let's, let's demonstrate. Export. Still the same thing, right? Because it is the same thing. Counter is now the same as R0. Reminds you, counter is not the value 10 or the value 11. Counter is a reference. That's the difference. It's not an absolute value. It is a reference to something that holds an absolute value. This one references the R0. Now it sounds complicated, but it's not really. If you have 16 variables, R0 uh, uh, up to R6, uh, up to uh, R15, and you can give them names, and uh, then you can use them here in your source code. So I'm adding to the counter one, and I store that back in the counter. Now you see this is actually starting to speak to you, right? Isn't it? Ah, uh -huh, interesting. It just remembers this register values in between runs. Even though the code is completely rebooted, the register values of the chip are remembered. So let's look at this thing then. Do we still have something that we can smelt? Um, not currently, but uh, we could toss something in. But instead of pushing this button now, I will tell the computer to do that for us. But first let's charge the batteries with our nice 20 kilowatts, plus the two solar panels. This will charge it rather quickly. Ah! Wait. Health stuff here. Man, I wish this wouldn't happen so easily. So we just saw the very foundations of the programming with MIPS. What you need to make the housing and the chip, and that you need the housing and the chip, and that you need this board to program them and the computer to program them. And how to do that with export and import. I could use a second chip here and put it in there and then click import, and I would see the code of that chip, and then I put the other chip in again and click export, and both chips have the same code. It's really that simple. It's really completely straightforward. Okay, here we have the arc furnace and I want this button to be pushed automatically, all the time. Well, how, we do, do, how do we do this? Well, of course we press F1, our trusty stationpedia, and we look at arc furnace. And here we see what we have to press then is activate. And how, what do we do then? Well, let's look at on, for example. If the arc furnace would be wired to D0 or D1 or D3, D2, D3, D4, D5, you know, one of the six screws of the housing, then I could just say, let's say it's D0, I could just say S, D0, on, 1. This would turn the device on or would make sure that it is on. Like uh, a door, open, 1, means the door is open. Open. Zero means the door is closed. I can also read that. You can see read and write here. So I would say L into register R0, uh, device 0, open, and then I would know whether the door is currently open, which we could use to turn off the station lights when we leave out there for mining.
And it's very, very simple to do. But you have to know a few more concepts. And I'm uh, trying to tell them to you now. So we want to activate the arc furnace. So that's what we know already, right? We want to say S and then maybe a screw and then activate and then probably one. I don't know if what meaningful values this one has. Oh, right here. One, if device is activated, usually means running, otherwise zero. So I guess if I write activate zero to the thing, it will um, not do anything. Or if it's already smelting, then it will abort that smelting process, I guess. But how do we write to that thing? Well, we can just assign it to a screw. But I don't want to do that. I want to show you what you can do instead. Uh, here we have the prefab name. Let's uh, ignore the word prefab, which is like prefabricated or whatever that really means. And let's also change the music. That is very important. So uh, when I click here, this text has now been copied to clipboard. But that's not so necessary and sometimes it's even impossible. Then you have to kind of guess what the full text would be when it's too long. Um, we need that in our source code. The upper lower case is important. It needs to be correct. Now if you're a beginner programmer or a beginner typist on a computer, that will be a horror to you. But well, sorry, you have to live with that. You have to learn precision. You have to, that is necessary. So this is a good opportunity for you to do that. Because the world around you in this Stationeers game will teach you, you did it right, you did it wrong, and it's a fun way to learn that stuff. So, Structure Arc Furnace. Well, does this mean that when I use this name, I can write to my Arc Furnace over there? Well, yes and no. It's not writing to that Arc Furnace, but to any and all Arc Furnaces. I can also address that one Arc Furnace specifically. But there's nothing in here that tells me what how that works. Why? Because this article is about the arc furnace in a conceptual way. It's talking about arc furnaces. It's not talking about your arc furnace. So there's no information about that in here. But let's okay. Let's first uh, do something. I will delete some of the code that we don't need anymore. Oh, and I want to, uh, before we continue, I want to show you something. Here, when I hover, hover here, we see LED display small. Now behold. Now it's flashing an arrow. It's saying, arrow unknown at line 8. Uh, in line 8, I'm probably saying, I mean, the line is gone now. I can click import to see it again, but I don't want to. That's where I write the value uh, some color value or the number value to this thing but this thing is no longer existent now let's put it up again then let display small sorry but it's still not working what's happening well the problem is that uh, this screw when i turned it to reference this device was actually was not referencing through the cable and then to the left and then over there or whatever but it was referencing this one objective device i mean in reality things usually don't have numbers but you can point at a thing for example the guy is standing in front of you you can point at them and that is one that's the identity then that's the absolute identity it's uh, the i don't know it's okay that, that's the that's the thing the one thing and this screw is referring to the one thing, but the one thing no longer exists. I removed it, and now I put up a new thing. I mean, this is a new thing now, and so it can no longer reference that. Um, everything in the world, this, 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 has a unique identifier number, and this number was used here, but we cannot see that nicely. We can just see the name. It was used to reference that thing, just as this uh, here reference all these devices by their unique absolute identity number this has a number that uh, and if there would be another active event they would also have a number and there would be a different number but the prefab name would be structure active vent and there's also if you look here active vent uh, no not the item very important to distinguish I ran into that problem so often it's always the structure that you're talking about uh, normally here we see the prefab hash and the prefab name. So the pref the, the name, we, c we can refer to the type active vent. And we can do that by using the name. That's of course what I will be doing. 
but you can also use this number. We can also just copy the number instead. This is the same as that, except this in the source code has to be converted to this first. So why do I not just use this then? So I skip the conversion because um, uh, you will see that uh, that is just the most efficient and easiest way to program this. Uh, okay, let's do the arc furnace from behind. Edit. Uh, define. Um, any arc fern. This is a, num a name that I just came up with. I created that name and now it exists. But the uh, what does this do? Creates a label that will be replaced throughout the program with a provided value. Now it's providing the value. Uh, let's look at the arc furnace again. Hmm. Here we have this number. Let's copy that number. Edit. And then we say write, uh, but this won't work. This is for devices, for DB or D0. But this is not for uh, what I'm doing here. So we have to write, uh, say, uh, write batch. Stores register value to logic type on all output network devices with provided type hash. <laughs> so in, in simple words, um, I want to write something to all those devices. So this is the devices that I want to write to, and I want to write on zero. Run. No more, no longer an error. And what's happening? We can not. Well, okay. It's ah yeah. We can we can see that the arc furnace is still on. Didn't I just turn it off? Hmm. I must have made a mistake. Or is the problem that the arc furnace is not on the same network? Because that is something you have to consider. For example, here is the cable. Ca okay, um, out there we have our basically our power station, and that delivers into the battery, and the battery then starts a new cable network, and then another new cable network here. It's just legacy, but you know that's the way it is. This is a cable network. There we have our uh, chip, which is powered by that, and also logicked by that, and that goes over here, and we have the arc furnace. Oh, I realize what the problem is. Often the problem will really be the cabling, and the thing is, I don't have uh, the arc furnace cable up yet. The power, yes, but not the logic. Some devices have their logic and power outlets separate. And that's the case here. Oh, it's warm in here. Hmm, should we implement a cooling solution based on MIPS? What do you think, huh? Well, not at this pace. Aha, it seems to be off. Let's see if that was indeed us by just turning it on then. Let's see if that works. Confirm, export. Oh, now it's on. See, uh, when I turn it on and off, this will not just turn the device on and off, it will also flip the physical switch. That's very cool. Uh, sometimes you might place your station batteries in an awkward way that you cannot access those, those switches. Then you just go to uh, station battery. You copy this and you say SB, this value, which you can also place there directly. You don't have to use the define that I just did there. Uh, you can do that directly. You can say SB. Oh, let's do that. Let's just turn that thing off. Why not? Edit. SB this value on zero confirm export and um, I am confused is this thing now off oh right it's on a different okay that didn't work because it's on a different uh, cable network but we c what we can do here is we can see that's the logic output and see it sometimes it's indeed meaningful that some devices have a uh, different output for that because um, if the, if this would be the same output, I mean, I cannot just connect this cable where the power is coming from to the cable network over here. That would just the game would say no. I'm not going to do that. Now your devices will fry, ha ha, or something like that. But I can just um, try to. Mm, yeah, never mind. Uh, 
I will just connect that to our general logic network and then we can do all the things. And you see the station battery is now off. Was that from the shock that we just gave it by cabling it up or something? We can find out by saying turn that thing on. Export. It's on. Okay, so let's look at the code and enjoy what it's doing. See how simple that is? And just saying write to all devices of this type that they shall be on uh, on one or on zero. Very cool. Or I can use uh, the, some placeholder name that I just think up here and then I can say Arc Furnace on. Or I can say Arc Furnace activate. Let's do that then. And now you see it is smelting. Now we will push this button which will flip the activate from on to off. I... wait, do, let's do that again. See, now something was tossed out, but it is still smelting. Because the chip keeps turning it on and on and on and on. Now we can just throw our stuff in here conveniently. A whole stack of them when we come home from mining and we can just forget about it. Isn't that cool, man? Okay, now that we are kind of starting with the, with the cool stuff, what else can we do? For example, um, let's react to the door here. Let's, let's react to whether this door is open. Because when I leave the station to do stuff outside, I don't want all these lights to burn through my battery power, because I don't so much need them then. But... This thing is yet again on another cable network because I place this in the airlock which does really belong in an airlock. It's not necessary but it belongs in the airlock because if this electricity craps out this airlock is on its own power network and okay it also has the battery chargers here that's not the wisest thing to do because they will also draw power. They should basically be on that other network but I would not move them over now uh, because you want your airlock to be working and also even even if the power craps out, then here you can just swap out with your own battery. Even if they will kill you a bit, but uh, you know, just to flip the airlock, that's you know, just hold your breath. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's, that's, why, that's why it's cool to have that thing in here. But this means that we have yet another cable network, and so the door is here. So can we just like pipe this over to this one then? And yeah, no. Um, see here we have the console which only has one output. This is for power and for logic. So if you want to use this to switch the doors, then um, well, tough luck. I mean, this is the power and the logic. I mean, there are probably ways to cable this up accordingly, but there's a simpler way. Because we can get this door to be seen, to be visible on this other logic network. And for that we need a logic mirror. That's a chip. There's no such thing as a logic mirror because the logic chips, they are a kit. Kit logic I.O. And the logic mirror is one of them. Now I missed... Uh, uh, no, okay, let's see. We have the logic reader. Let's go through these quickly. Yeah, that works. This works. The logic reader. Um, it reads a value from a device that you can choose with the screw and you can also choose which value it will be reading. That's the var screw that you can see there. And then we'll just have that value. And then you can read that from, an, from another chip. Um, I mean, a MIPS programmer will probably not use these things, but it's good to know. Then we have the logic writer, which does the opposite. Uh, you can, for example, read from one device, and then you connect the logic writer to your logic reader, and you write the value that you read there into a different device. That's what you can do there, but it is much easier with MIPS. Batch writer writes to many devices, to all, then you choose the type and not the individual device. 
logic mirror, that's what we need now. Then we have the slot reader, which can, for example, read whether the arc furnace currently has something in its in-slot. So we can do what I'm just doing there, this um, automatic firing of the arc furnace, uh, also, also with logic chips. You need two of them. One of them is the slot reader and one of them is the logic writer or the batch writer. Depending on if I want to turn on all arc furnaces that exist, why not? Or if I want to just turn on the individual one. Then we have the batch. Then we have the batch reader, which um, is now you might be thinking batch writer. I get, you know, I write to ten doors, all of them shall be open, and they will all open. But the batch reader, how does that work? You read from from ten uh, gas sensors, the current temperature, what? do you do with all those values exactly if you look up there there's a screw that's called uh, mthd which probably means method and that is the method by which these all, all these values will be dealt with you can say they shall be uh, added up or they shall be um, you want the highest of them or the lowest of them or the average of them that's what the batch reader does and you have the same statement also in the MIPS source code where you then also have one of the arguments for that batch reading command which will be wh what to do with all those values then we have the slot and then we have the um, reagent reader which I haven't used that that is for example useful I think if you want to find out uh, in your production machines what what stuff's still in there I think if that, that's possible I'm not sure batch slot reader um, yeah you can read from slot this and this from all the arc furnaces and uh, average stuff up and the, this is um, just a nice switch, uh, which you can just connect it to a device and then flip on the lights, flip on and off the light. That's very simple, very simple to do. Now we need the logic mirror. And the logic mirror, as you can see, it has an input, it has an output, obviously, because we want to go from one logic network to the other, and it has power. So how do we do this then here? Hmm, tricky. On the floor then? Yeah, that should work. Let's, let's do it here. It doesn't matter where it gets its power from as long as it does get power. So now we have this logic not network ready to be mirrored by that thing. And then we connect this here so it can be on that logic network. Now we turn it on so that it can do anything in the first place. Oh, right. It needs to uh, have that. And now it's flashing an error. Why? Because it doesn't know what the fuck to mirror. Because you're not mirroring the entire network. You're mirroring one device off that network. So let's mirror. What do we have? Gas sensor. Glass door. Hmm. Interesting. Which glass door? And that's the thing that you would definitely be using when you're um, actually when you're setting up airlocks, you would be using the labeler. But as I showed already earlier in this video, you can just trick. You just cut off one door, so you will only have one door then in the list, which is this one. You click the door, then you cable up the other one. So now that remaining door must be the other one. Simple. But let's do this just for the moment. It's a shitty name. I just you know I don't want to go into the complex stuff now. Oh. Uh, gas sensor and now we had outer so now we have the outer door and I can also rename the outer door now because the door is being referenced by its absolute identity number therefore this chip knows the re re we are referring to outer I mean that the name changed it does matter the name is just a property we are not referring to that thing by its name but by its identity number and um, that is something that I will now turn on its head or very soon when I program in source code. But let's first... Uh, <laughs> I want to read the logic mirror. But only this logic mirror. So let's give this thing a name. Um, LM underscore airlock door outer. Control A, Control C, confirm. Now I have this in my clipboard, and the name can be anything, but I like systematic names. Okay, let's define... 
uh, uh, any logic mirror and then I want to I can use this number right but we did that already let's do something more advanced let's use the name but you see we need a number and this is red meaning this doesn't work well what you have to do is this the hash function which is not explained and has to be written in this way uppercase everything you know will turn this into that I mean in, into the respective number for the for the logic mirrors and you can guesstimate that we will do the same with this name this will now also be a number and my logic mirror see this is any logic mirror and this is my logic mirror what do we do with this then well um, let's no the, that was actually ah, okay uh, burn. this is actually very nice I want to keep that what's happening oh it's just the sun So we have seen L for load something from a device and S for save something to a device. And this is for always DB or D0 to D5 or in a, in an, in an uh, filtration unit or an AC would be D0 and D1. Or if you're having your hard suit, you know, the space suit, then you have D0 for your helmet, D1, probably the glasses, I'm not sure, you would have to experiment. And the suit itself is DB. You know, that thing where the chip is running on, that's DB. Uh, so we have seen L and S. And we have also seen SB. There's also LB. Let's test that for a second. Let's say LB register R0. Now it wants to know what device type do you want to read the batch stuff from. Let's say any logic mirror. Now, what logic type do you want to read from whatever the fuck device this is? Well, the logic mirror is the door. The logic mirror is the door right now. So we want to know if the door is open. And I said already, batch mode means we are repeating potentially with multiple numbers. And so the system wants to know what do you want to do with all those numbers? I usually do some. I don't like average because if you add 2 and 3 together and divide that then by 2 to have the average, you get um, 2.5. Right? Um, even if there's only one value, I just don't trust this. It just it seems impure to me to use the average command. The sum command, though, is pure integer-wise. Also, we're only dealing with one value here, so let's just use sum. It's also shorter. I mean, the line length is limited anyway. What should this do? It should load into register a zero um, from any existing logic mirror the value open sum. I actually don't know what happens if we have a second logic mirror now in our station that is not wired up to a door but to something else that doesn't even have the open command. I don't know that. Really don't know. So it's right to the housing setting R0 which will now tell us in the housing or maybe yeah let's do it in parallel SD0 uh, setting R0 which should write that to the LED once we have wired that up again export and red why line 15 what is that line 15 is this d0 is not a device there's actually a statement that i haven't actually tried yet uh, which allows you to check if a device is assigned or not ah yeah so there's a zero and here also is a zero let's flip the airlock Oh, I realize. Oh, see, good thing. We can actually click this thing from here. And I think we can even click it from here. And that's a bit spooky. And I think that should change that. Why should I be able to cycle the airlock from over here? But anyway, what is this saying? One. Oh! One. So we just use the logic mirror here to read that the door uh, is, whether the door is open. And so again, what did we do? This thing is on a different circuit. 
and we piped that circuit into the input of the logic mirror the output goes into our circuit where our chip is and that thing also needs power from whatever network and it needs to be on yeah what's happening now what value do we have now zero interesting the default value is then zero uh -huh, i didn't know that and now we get one so let's flip that door again and we immediately see zero so that's working so we can react to that door now Shall we turn off all the lights accordingly? Yeah, of course we shall. So these are the wall longs, uh, wall, wall lights long wide, which you can see when you build them. Then I click here, structure light long wide. And you're probably spotting some pattern here, right? I mean, uh, how the names are structured. Mo in most cases, you can just make them up yourself. They will be correct, you know? Define uh, hash. So I could have written here any lights, but I like to keep my texts short and also systematic. This doesn't. This is systematic, but you know what's even more systematic than that? That is more systematic. This is the class, the type mirror and this is my specific instance that i want to refer to like there might be other instances that will but there will only ever be one class of this device uh yeah we'll go into that shortly so define class light and now we want to yeah something interesting uh let's say we want to write to the lights uh, as batch them on R0. Export. Oops, the lights are off. Dude, I'm inside the station. What the fuck is this shit, man? Oh, right. It's still um, cycling. Because it tries to, it's, uh, this uh, simple airlock chip cannot be adjusted for uh, intended target pressure. I have an advanced chip here, but then I would have to put up blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do that now. Um, okay, the lights are off. That's wrong, man. I don't want the lights off now. So lights turn off on when we're outside. So the logic is exactly flipped. What's the reason? Very simple. When we're outside, the, out, the outer door is open. And one is then the value of open. And if you write that to the lights, then they will be on when we're outside. And off when we're inside. That's the opposite. How can we, um, how can we invert this? Well, let me show a complicated way to do that. So that you learn a few more things. And then we go and make that sophisticated. Um, so let's see branch if less than or equal or let's say equal let's just say equal whatever let's trust the system branch if equal what is equal well r zero is the value that we have here you know what let's give this a name Elias door open r15 so I'm loading into my door open and I don't care which register that is. R15, R0 doesn't matter. Therefore, why am I using R15? Because I'm um, doing something quickly in here and then, yeah, let's use R0, R1, R2 for that while still designing the code. Or maybe even it's just a temporary value. So that would be always be that way. Uh, then it's easy to handle R0, R1 and such. But uh, these are kind of clumsy or kind of cumbersome. R15 is a bit more cumbersome than R0, right? So for the named ones, I count down from the high ones. And for the non-named ones, I count up from the low ones. Of course, you have to take care not to meet in the middle. And also, uh, if I use, use these, which I will not name, then I can recycle them. I can use R0 for a temporary value here and later down there. One time for temperature, other time for pressure, doesn't matter. But uh, the important values, uh, the named ones, I will not recycle. I will not uh, do that. I could, but I won't to keep the code clean. So here we're loading from the... But I want to show you something else first. What is this? Load batch named. Into the register door open. We want to load a batch named from this type. We already know the type thing. But we also have the name thing. Oh, that's what the Z. Now we're actually referring to that device itself without using the stupid screws, which can break. 
you know if i remove the logic mirror and put it up again and give it the same name the code will still work because the objective uh, type number never changes and the objective name value also never changes and if i've given it the same name then yeah that will work what do i want to read whether it's open and since it's bad mode batch mode we have to give the batch type See, that's the same thing that we did before, except this time I'm really only getting that from this one mirror. And I think that feels better, doesn't it? I uh, will not write to the housing because we have our nice LED. Why not use that then? So if R0 is equal to 0, then uh, this means that the door outside is closed. Lights on. Lights on, please. And if the register R0 is 1, as in the outer door is open, then lights off, please. Now this will obvious, obviously not work that, that, like this, because um, it will... There are several bugs here. Maybe you can spot them. I will wait a, a short moment while drinking something. Water. I only ever drink water. No alcohol, no coffee, no nothing. I'm not part of that party and I feel good. Arguably from a plastic bottle, but yeah. Man gönnt sich ja sonst nichts. So, the mistakes are. Um, here we're checking this. That's alright. And then we jump here. And then we're checking that. And that's all right and then we jump there but what happens if neither of these apply i mean one of these will apply but what if neither applies then the code will continue execution and will do this but even worse it will continue execution to that and then we jump start again so um yeah let's do this export ah the light is on and if you would leave the station Huh. That did not work for whatever reason. I don't didn't expect that. That is not part of the show. Let's see what's going on. I don't get it. Well, good thing we still have our debug value. Uh, wait, what? Oh, as oh my god! Stupid! Why am I using R zero still? Export. See, now we can go mining, and the lights will turn off automatically. Let's demonstrate that. Haha, MIPS programming. You want to do that, won't you? Okay, but that was a very cumbersome way to do that. Let me show you the shortest way to do that. Very, very, very short. So the problem here was that uh, we now have the information whether the door is open, but we need not 1 and 0, we need 0 and 1. We need that inverted. Let me show you how that works. <coughs> So this can go, this can go, this can go, and this, and this, and this, and all of that can go away. And this means that you're very curious how that command works. If it saves us this, these many lines. Let's see, um, let's first test if this actually works. It appears to be working. Yeah, it works. Let me explain what that does. It, the explanation says, register will be set to 1 if A equals B. Otherwise, it will be set to 0. That is what this text says in a, not so many words. 
and uh, I think you already understand equal we can also say not equal we can also say less than we can also say greater than we can also say less than or equal greater than or equal and we can also check if something is zero and such so um, there are many commands but since they are so systematic it's not that many technically so if Again, we're trying to find out if the outer door is open. Let's say the outer door is open, so we're currently mining. So th this is one. Uh, uh, this is one. If door open is equal to zero, this will then be true. And true and false is expressed as zero and one. So this, uh, when we are out there mining, this one here and the zero are not equal. So the statement, are these equal, will not be true. So it's zero. So uh, even though door open is 1, because we're currently mining, R0 is now 0. Now what if we indoors? When we indoors, the door out there is not open, it is closed. So we have 0 here. In this 0 equal to 0, yes. So that is true, and true means 1. So then we have a 1 here. And that's it. I just flipped this, uh, this bit, basically, or this, uh, this logic value. S, E, Q, um, R0, door open. Rather simple, right? Um, okay, that was the thing with the light. Things we want to keep. Let's leave them up here. Yeah, the any arc furnace thing. Let's clean that up because... Uh, <laughs> let's clean that up. <laughs> let's clean that up in a good way. First check if this is still working because you can see that even though there's nothing in the arc furnace, it will glow from time to time. See? So if I now botch the source code, you know that it will... Uh, that it will uh, no longer glow. I wonder if I'm just like writing some random stuff in some random memories that I have no clue what's happening right now. Hopefully the game will protect itself from such things. So it's no longer glowing. So define any arc furnace, or let's say class arc fern Hash and now what am I supposed to write, huh? Guess. Structure arc furnace. <laughs> it is really that simple. I mean, there were quite a few concepts here, and uh, you're probably not as fast as I'm telling you these things to really put them into your head and keep them there, but. Um, that's the thing, I mean, all this colorful stuff here, which looks quite chaotic, it's now beginning to make sense, right? And the more sense it makes, the less complex it really is. Here we are defining our type for the lights, here we are defining the type for the arc furnace, not the names, because I want to just access all the lights and access all the arc furnaces. Um, but the logic mirror, I only want to access this one thing, and I'm defining my register to have this name, uh, door open. Then I'm turning on the arc furnace, then I'm reading from the logic mirror whether the door is open, in the door open value, and then I flip that bit. Uh, in the, if I would have a beacon in here, you know, you can install a beacon for real, for good, um, and not just the one with battery, the battery driven one. Uh, where is it? This one. Uh, with Q you throw, but with T you place. Um, you can look all that up in the settings. Always peruse these in any game. Will make your life better. Um, but you actually have uh, the possibility of installing a one. Um, yeah, one in your station. Let's install one. Beacon uh, kit beacon. And. Um, I would also... Do I have a tracker chip? Tracker, yep. If I keep this on me, then I can never get lost again if I install this thing. However, the beacon... It uses, when it is turned on... Oh, that's the wrong one. 300 watts. That's a shit ton of watts. I mean, let's, for comparison, this is 50 watts. 50, 100, 200. We have 200 watts of lights in here. 
Uh, and 300 watts, this thing uh, uses just for telling us this direction and distance. This direction and distance, you know. And um, so I don't want to have that running all the time. Yeah, so guess what? We want to turn that on when the lights are off. Right? I see already in your head where you're placing the line in the source code. Above where we inf invert that bit, right? Um, where would I put this? Hmm... Oh, it's actually not in the way here. That's very cool. Didn't expect this. Cable. I put this up here with the lights because it's kind of connected associative association wise and that's how you should plan uh, plan your association landscape so later you don't get lost so easily CLS uh, beacon hash probably structure beacon maybe that's correct but anyway you see uh, looking up all those numbers and copying them in here might save you some lines but usually it's good to have the names up here do it like doing it like this and you don't have to look up in the stationpedia in the first place um, I will now delete the door open thing because it's really not all, all that important and we'll load that into register R0. Then I write that to my little LED still. And then I flip it around just like the add command we can see we can say create the result of this and then write it into this. So this is not a problem. Now we say SB beacon on R0 and that's it, I think. Is the beacon on? I can't even turn it on, which means that it's controlled by logic. Well, let's see then. Does this work? Ha ha ha. Let's see how cool this is. You have to learn this MIPS programming stuff, absolutely. And I'm glad that I, if I can help you with that. Everybody should learn to program. It's just the shit. Um, yeah, what else could we do with programming here? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should I explain subroutines, maybe? Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's uh, do a subroutine. This will not be a meaningful one, but at least I can explain the concept. What is a subroutine? That is uh, when you jump from in your source code to a different place, and then you return to where you came from, and then you continue execution. And then you can call that subroutine from another place, and then the subroutine will execute, and then will return to that place. Um, is that this command? Yep. Okay, um, subroutine. Which is a stupid name for a subroutine. And what shall my subroutine do? This is very obviously uh, obvious when it works. This will not be executed because there's this jump start, you know? We come in here, da, 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 then we go in here, da, 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 and... We don't get here. So, but I want to get there. So we can do this. And then we are down here, this will work. But I want to go, go back to this place without having to know that this is this place. I can, of course, put a label here, but that was not the idea. You know? The idea was to return to wherever that is called. I can call this here, I can call this there, and maybe you remember what I said about arguments and parameters, because if down here I use, for example, the value of register R0 or R1 or R2, that would then effectively be a parameter. And then I can give an argument to that parameter up here. I can just write something into those registers and then I decide I will call that subroutine because now I happen to have nice values in that registers. And the subroutine can then work with those, um, with those um, arguments. And so that makes sense then to call the subroutine in different places, you know, different parameters, same subroutine. Very cool situation. But where do I jump back then? Um, um, da, 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 Okay, I, I know that I have to use a different jump command. This one. Let's see what it does. Jump execution to line A and store next line number in RA. 
what this is saying uh, is supposed to say is that um, first we remember where we are then we jump down here and now you can use this this memory to jump back here and that is you can see here in R in RA so jump to RA then uh, that goes away so what's happening? The source code is initializing some stuff here, yield, then we jump to that subroutine, then we jump back to here, no, no matter where that is. And uh, then we do all this logic mirror stuff. Let's see if it, that's working. Is that thing still glowing? Yes. Is that still working? Yes, it is still insisting on being turned off. So that worked. We just used a subroutine. Um, yeah, we have 18 registers, 16 for you for free use. Then we have register RA, which I used here. This command set that register, and here I'm using the value to jump to the respective line. And then there's also the stack pointer, I think it's SP. Uh, but I won't talk about the stack now, it's too advanced, and I myself have not actually used it yet. Uh, yeah. That was subroutines. Hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's ADD, add, SUB, sub, there's MUL, mul, multiply, and um, we just. Uh, we can. I can also. Let's see what this in. What's currently in the arc furnace. Instead of triggering the arc furnace, I will not do that, but will load information about what's currently in the arc furnace. I want to load something from the slot, you know? Uh, arc furnace. So I can load batch named slot, which means I load from any device of a certain type, but also only those of the logic, current logic network that have the respective name. And I can say, uh, but I want the slot, you know? This is just loading the value of all doors, for example, if I use the door type or all doors with that name and this is also loading something from the slot let's load into r0 once again so register recycling why not uh but not named i don't want the named ones just all arc furnaces slot index zero i will tell you that about that shortly logic slot type occupied batch mode sum then i want that in there the subroutine is not doing anything, it's just jumping and returning. Export. Here we see a zero. But if I toss something... Do I still have something, actually, that I could poss possibly smell? If I would push here now, it would activate the arc furnace. Otherwise it would say, um, nothing to smelt. We know that. But I'm just saying that because currently it's not saying there's a uh, lid in here, you know. Oh, what's that? A one. So it c c we're currently reading whether that slot is occupied. Which slot? Well, Arc Furnace doesn't just have the information about it to, to this about these logic things, but also about the slots. Here we have the slots import the import slot where stuff comes in as index zero i guess we could also actually reference to that uh, to, to that slot by using the word import i'm not sure maybe and then we have the export slot um and then we can see which values apply to which slots if you look for example for contrast at the hard suit Here we see that not all potential values apply to all slots. You can read the pressure, for example, from slot 0 and 1, because your spacesuit has your oxygen canister and it has your waste canister. So reading the pressure only makes sense for these two. 
um, I mean, you could argue that you play, if you place a canister in one of the other slots here, which is just the inventory slots, then why shouldn't I know the pressure? But it just doesn't provide that ability. That's You have to live with that. Um, you can... Uh, but here, uh, what you can do is you can read the occupant hash. The occupant hash is the type. That's like when I say uh, define class arc furnace hash structure arc furnace. That is this. That's the occupant hash. And there's also the reference ID. What is that? That is something we did not use yet in our source code. And maybe we want to do that. That is the absolute objective ID in the world that I talked about so much already. That is what this is. So in other words, what you can do, probably, I'm not sure, is you can read from the, we are the hearts, you can say in slot five, I possibly have some, uh, canister with gas then you get the object reference ID and maybe th you can then read the pressure of that with some trick I don't I don't know that I, I have no clue so where were we um, I actually forgot yeah the slot arc furnace what other information can we then read from the slots where well, I just read whether it is occupied we can also read the occupant hash let's do that And now we see this, and that's completely useless, and therefore I will now change this for a big one. If you want to make a bigger LED, you need two uh, consoles, and I want to make a really big one, so I need three. So I need copper. I do have copper. Behold. Yep, the device is gone. Ah, no, not the me. Does this fit here, the big one? It fits. Okay, a bit awkward, but doesn't matter. Awkward is my middle name. Oh, that was awkward, huh? The <laughs> hair. No, this was. No, that was. Uh -huh. Running in circuits. So let's use the screwdriver to drive the screw. Okay, that didn't really help. I assumed that we would now see the full number since the display is so large, but that's still not working. What is it that we are seeing here? We're seeing 1.9024 exponent 8. So. Uh, this means that after the one, we have eight zeros. Actually, not zeros, but eight places. So uh, we have a, a, va a value with nine digits, and uh, from the left it reads one nine zero two four. One nine zero two four. One nine zero two three. Why? Because it's only showing me these values, not the rest. So it rounded and six rounds up to four in this case. So we're seeing that number. We're seeing the prefab hash. We're seeing this thing which I access with uh, hash, uh, structure blah blah blah. I can also do this with for the uh, for this thing. I can, for example, check if what's in there is lead. Or maybe I actually accidentally toss, toss my mining belt in there with all the uh, with that stuff. You know that's that's going to be fun to smelt that. Everything is going to fucking explode, dude. And I can check. Oh, that happened. Then don't turn it on. That works. You know. Um, I think uh, I feel maybe we should do something with conditions a bit more because you might not be so familiar with that yet. After all this. Um, let's reinstate our nice subroutine. Oh, and take another look at the arc furnace stuff. Just see what else we can read from those slots. We can read the occupant hash. The prefab hash. I don't actually know what that is because I thought occupant hash is that. That should be the same thing. Return returns the hash, so the hash of the current occupant, the unique identifier of the thing. But that's not true, right? We just realized that, we just verified that occupant hash is not the unique identifier of the thing, that is the identifier of the type. Prefab hash. 
returns the hash of the structure in the slot. Wait, now I'm confused. I have no clue what this what the prefab hash is supposed to do here, but I have occupant hash and we have reference ID. Let's read the reference ID for kicks. This will be a number that doesn't tell us anything, but it is the objective reference to the thing in the world. Oh, what just plopped down there? That was the letter we just smelted. Uh, that would be the reference ID. Export. And there's nothing. Why? Because, <laughs> because that was a stupid thing for me to do. Um... Yeah, Ace943 is the objective reference ID that the game engine itself uses to refer to that one thing that I tossed in there. That's what's going on. So when we click on reference ID here, we will see unique reference ad identifier for this object. Unique reference identifier for this object. Returns the hash of the current occupant, the unique identifier of the thing. So it's the phrasing here is quite not optimal, but anyway. Um, sorting class, I don't know what that is. Damage, yeah, if, if the storm has damaged it or some fire. We can probably read how high the stack can get. Let's read the max quantity. I think the number that we will then see is 50. Ah, right, export. 50, haha. -ha. So let's read the quantity then. That should be a one. Still a one. Zero, because nothing's in the import slot, because the thing is currently closed, it's currently smelting something. And now two. See, that's the two that were remaining and they're now waiting. Isn't that cool? <laughs> um, okay, let's uh, look at conditions. I mean, I already showed that, right? If something is equal to something, then you jump somewhere, you can also say less than, but something very, 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 very important you should know is you can also branch relative. Instead of saying I branch to, um, let's say R0 is 17, do stuff when that is equal, and then I have do stuff, Ignore the rest of the source code, please. I, I would have to remove it, and that's just too... I don't want to deal with that now. So, um, here we do stuff, and then we jump back to start. And here we also jump to start, because, you know... But what I can do instead, I can do branch relative, and do my stuff here. Which can make the source code quite a bit shorter and easier to read. Let's see what this does. B R EQ does the following relative branch to line C if A equals B or relative branch to line C if A less than B or less than or equal or greater than or equal or greater than uh, you see here on the right we have A, B and C in red uh, these are the uh, parameters into which we have to place the arguments uh, if I do uh, this then there's only two of them because now it doesn't need the value with which I want to compare because I'm already saying I want to compare with the zero I don't know why that's in there really but whatever anyway branch relative and what does branch relative mean uh, it means we want to branch not to an absolute number to an absolute line which we can use as a label or can use a number you know but we want to branch by two which means one Two. Doing one usually doesn't make sense, or I guess it never makes sense, because if the condition is true, if we jump here, if the condition is not true, if we just continue executing here. So that's stupid. But this 
is very useful. For example, we write a value into register R0 that is 18. So if register R0 is ever 17, then uh, if register R0 is uh, not 17, then we just jump here. But if it is 17, then we will uh, see. Uh, okay, do uh, R zero not equal to seventeen? No, then we jump down here. But if it is equal to seventeen, then we will not do the jumping. So we will be here and in, uh, say register R zero is now eighty. Branch relative, very important. I absolutely know that. I should know that. And also, like I already showed, um, we can write directly into a register a logic result. Here, just S and then your evaluation, SEQ. And remember, up here are all, all our commands. And I'd like to keep going and like build a little um, cooling system now, but I have work tomorrow and it's late. I have to go to bed. That sucks, right? Yes, I don't want to have to work. I rather want to do this shit. But no, this is not me asking for money. Absolutely not. That would be idiotic. And me saying that this is not me asking for money is not me asking underhandedly for money i'm not fucking doing that do not give me any money and i'm not going to tell you how i'm just saying i don't want to fucking work tomorrow i want to do this shit that's all i'm saying maybe just take me for, for the word that i'm speaking because usually they mean something all righty so much for this maybe this will become a series and maybe not anyway see you back on earth